Welcome, everyone, to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past broadcasts are podcasts. You can find them at artistfirst.com. We welcome your questions and comments by email, dj at artistfirst.com. And here they are, Margaret and Michael Lines. Thank you very much, (laughs) Z-Man. And here we are again. Here we are again. Mm-hmm. I'm Margaret. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and I'm Michael. And tonight we are doing the show from the veranda. Mm. As you guys can tell, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to do, do this with springtime passion. Ah, it's certainly bursting out all over. That's right. Every blessed thing is chasing every other blessed thing for sex right now. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the squirrels are just as horny as hell. Uh, but um, but it is fun to watch them. Unless they chase each other around, yeah. And it is fun to shoot at them. Uh, but uh, but, 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 but what? Here, on, here on the souls of the everyman, we don't believe in violence against rodents. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! We would never do that, that you know of. Um, but anyway, yes. Uh, t- t- so tonight, um, tonight, tonight, we are going to talk about passion. And we looked back, and we we thought, well, oh gosh, we must have done a show about passion, and we did. But it was about three years ago, and in the mm. interim, a lot of passionate things have happened. Indeed, three years ago, <laughs> right? So the world was completely different three world- years ago. The world was completely different three years ago, and so um, it was time for another show on passion. And you came up with this um, inspiration for this topic in any case, so maybe you want to start off. Okay, I can do that. Um, Well, frankly, I was struck by how different people use the word passion. Um, Some people think, that passion is anger. Mm. And some people think that passion is only involved in sex. Mm. But regardless, it's always equated with a very strong emotion. Mm. Usually love or hate. But you think about it and you go, wait a minute. What is passion? And you, you, it's a word you use and you almost assume that everybody, oh yeah, everybody knows what, what that is. But when it's only used uh, describing anger, mm. you know, is that the only time you've been passionate is when you, someone's been exceedingly angry? Mm. Or... Hating someone? <laughs> That's a good one. You know, passionately hating someone? I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> passionately loving them? Oh, I'm down for that, too. Right. Well, I think it, it's interesting. Well, tonight um, we're, we also have a quote, and the quote we, we grabbed was, um, what grabbed us was somebody we read many years ago, and loved reading about. In fact, when Christopher was ill, um, one of the people we would read about at that time was um, was uh, Leo Buscaglia. And I'm not sure if he's, I think he's passed on. Yeah, he's he's passed away. But Leo Buscaglia was um, uh, a very interesting fellow. You know, the way he described his upbringing was this, he was, he was raised in this giant Italian family where um, passion uh, was basically on the menu every night. You know, we, they you, you you lived your life at the at the in the business and in the passionate um, embrace of all of your family members and in their embrace all the time. <laughs> so right. so he, right. he he couldn't understand when he um, it, like we've said many times in the past when you get outside of your own family, you don't understand how people could be so dry and dull. and You mean you don't know what your cousin's second wife's business uh, ledgers are? You know, yeah, everybody is in everybody's business, and everybody knows everything about everyone else, and everyone has an opinion about it. And he's like, how can you be so dry and dull? And, um, you know, uh, so um, 
the 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 one could say in general that that passion is intensity it's it's living life at at um at uh at full speed if you will and and buscalia um helped people kind of get in contact one of the things he did besides many other things was getting back into contact with this with the passionate part of them which everybody has Mm -hmm. you know if it if it's only as you said channeled in anger let's say or only in sex or only in one thing then then that uh outlet becomes both a um sort of a overused way to channel passion as well as perhaps a one note you know like the only time i live i feel like i'm living is when i'm i'm furious or the only time i feel like i'm living is when i'm i'm engaged in 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 sexual ex- escapades or some other thing and every other time the rest of my life is this this colorless dull void mm-hmm. and and that's you know it when you say it that way it sounds and it is um uh you know uh, incorrect it, it, it is a um it is a uh, limited yes it, it but it, an unnatural limiting mm-hmm. of of human spirit mhm it's just a you're finding the different channels where people pour their passion into mm. and some people are were trained that oh no you're not supposed to do that you know that's anger we never allow anger mm or we don't so any kind of intense emotion or intense experience was always pushed to the side um and i think it's there's a sexual dimorphism there too a uh, cultural sexual so women are told don't be angry and boys are told don't cry or don't uh, don't express the the softer emotions if you will and the, and passion is at the root of both of those things mhm mhm there's, there's nothing more passionate than a two-year-old that's that's going to cry, they're going to cry in 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 the most <laughs> intense and truthful way. They're they're going to wail at the top of their lungs in the middle of the store as loud as they can because they are sad or they are mad, and there's nothing going to stop them. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. that's true. But uh, the phrase uh, your your living out loud <laughs> exactly uh but it also reminds you of the, the um my big fat greek wedding movie oh yeah yeah where they were doing a visiting of the both sides mm-hmm. and and they're being exposed to this is the dynamic that each one was brought in you know and it's just it's very funny because well, uh, in that family would be like a buscalia family where everybody was in everybody's business and you knew the intimate details of every part of everyone's life. And if you were somehow shutting anyone out of any tiny piece of you, it was like, oh, because, oh, what? You don't want me to know. And like, how can I love you if I don't know everything about you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, that's that's kind of like what it means to be in a family. Mm where that's the mode of communication. Um, if, I, if I'm going to love you, I'm going to love you at the top of my lungs. And this is Nanny, right? Yeah. You should talk about Nanny. When you talk about passion, Nanny should come up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> talk about passion. Uh, my little Italian Nanny, little four foot ten, <laughs> a little tiny woman with the biggest set of lungs you'll ever hear. Right. It's amazing. And she did everything out loud. <laughs> the nanny loved you. She loved you at the top of your lungs every moment of the day. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, she was singing at the top of her lungs all the time. Right. And she mm-hmm. couldn't understand why, you know, why. Sh- so I, and I grew up with my parents who were very reserved and you had to be circumspect and you shouldn't be showing all this emotion. So as a small child, I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you had the Asian and the Italian, you know. You had... On one side, you know, she's singing and hugging and and stuff. And I being... love you, Margie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, give me a big hug. Right. right. <laughs> and then when you when I went to my parents, 
it was like, oh, no, no, we don't do that. Like, why don't we do that? <laughs> why don't we do that? That is, you know, that is confusing because, um, it, you know, there isn't a right way, but there's certainly, you know, the inconsistency between those two ways because you're, you, you, your basic nature holds a flame of passion. And, and we haven't really defined it, but but the basic human nature, the 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 chi, the flame of life force, requires expression. It can be expressed through everything, but it comes through the heart. And and I think everyone would agree that passion comes through the heart channel for sure. So when you live, you know, with with your passion um, literally on your sleeve, with your heart on your sleeve, when you when every blessed thing that you're doing is lived. At, at at full volume and with with in in technicolor you know in in super technicolor um as a child you're saying well that's 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 how we live we're going to be loud we're going to be opinionated we're going to we're going to be in everyone's business we're going to hug we're going to laugh we're going to wink we're going to all the things and then if you you you, if you are switching back and forth because i think you can live either way obviously you can be brought up in a reserved way or but you, I think switching back and forth would be very difficult. Well, uh, I was explained. <laughs> <laughs> explained. <laughs> I like the way you use that as a verb. I was, I was explained. <laughs> we got some explaining to do to you, kid. <laughs> yeah. My, my father asked my mother, "Why is she doing that? Why is she what? like that? Why is she doing that?" <laughs> and so my mother had to explain my behavior to my father as a oh, man. Oh, you, oh, I see. You were explained. <laughs> you, you were used as an object lesson. Yes. Oh, this is how it's happening. <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your story. <laughs> uh, but to to begin to understand, because it's not done that way in the Asian culture. Mm. You're not supposed to. Um, it, it, there's no hugging. There's no, you know, um, outwardly demonstrative emotion. Right. Yeah. You know, we we love you, and you should know that because we told you. Right. Because I told you, I sent you a note about it. <laughs> um, well, you know, and you mentioned my big fat Greek wedding, and 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 that same sort of, um, let's say, dispassionate passion is part of of um of western culture you see it in 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 the english culture and and translated into american presbyterian you know, this kind of you know um we love you but you know don't get the doilies wrinkled you know like sort of it's, it's just it, you know it's very um uh, uh tightly bound up and and then you end up with these very narrow channels where you can express your passion you know um and and these things you know uh, uh, the, the expression uptight was coined to kind of um, uh, uh, characterize this type of, of upbringing. You were brought up in an uptight family where nobody, you know, where, where it was all very locked down and strapped down. You ended up with a, a bunch of neuroses. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty you know? much neuroses. And the thing is, though, if you didn't have anything to compare it to, you, it would certainly confuse you. But you were really there. These are certain boundary lines you do not cross. Hmm. And this is the way it is. And we will choose for you the line that you're going to accelerate in. Hmm. And, and, and my dad, for argument's sake, his father and he, it was a relationship of, of unequals. You know, his, his, that, that relationship was... Um, Almost like a, a, a like as you said, like you, children are there to be seen and not heard. Um, you're you're my junior. You're my um, you know you are not my equal. And in in the um, in that sort of a, of a structure, your your passions are constantly constrained. You know, if you want to be in this structure, you have to be. Locked down, you have to be. Um, uh, you you have to be a uh, a cipher in essence. You have to be a certain way because this is how our family does it. Right. It, we don't do it that way. We do it this way. Hmm. 
And if you're part of this family, this is the way we we do it. So this is what you say. This is how you act. Right. This is what's acceptable. What's acceptable? That those terms exactly. Mm-hmm. And yet, and yet, when when he grew when he grew up and he found somebody to marry, he married my mother, who's not so locked down. <laughs> Marie's a little on a the free spirit. Yeah. A little bit on the free spirit side, kind of. And and when you had nanny, and then you know you 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 the I, I what I'm trying to say is I believe the heart gravitates away from that that this is an artificial constraint which um, which if you've given your freedom you you walk a, a much more expressive line you know well yes and the problem with it though is that you can be in a grouping that absolutely has no boundaries which is well, yeah. which is the other extreme you know it's like you, there's a middle road somewhere <laughs> that you've got to find that works you can't be up in everyone else's business and you can't be separate and everybody is just you know this is my lane nobody crosses the line well who who said reason is the circumference of passion was that aquinas say that again <clears throat> or i think it was descartes reason is the circumference of passion right but yet there yet it acknowledges that without you know that 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 reason is a is a an outer bound, but it's uh, it is not enough. You know you need both, as you say. You need the middle ground. You can't be one hundred percent passion and no boundaries, uh, because then we know that we're ungrounded and we're we're you know bouncing off the walls and well, acting out all the time. And go ahead. It doesn't allow for personal development of your spirit or soul mm. okay you you're you're identified either as a group soul this is what we do or you're identified with um just as you're a singularity is nobody i'm that's me this is who i am can't be done I mean in those kind of families the the passionate passionate you can have you can have a lot of tremendous um codependency you can have a lot of 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 sort of live for me love you know do do this because you love me kind of well, that kind of psychosis too well it it opens the door up for a balanced kind of family or one that is extreme one way or the other mm-hmm. so you can have people who are basically saying you know this is all right, on both sides. This is who we are. This is how we do it. Mm. And you are constrained, and everything is well thought out, and, this, and you follow this road. Or this is how we communicate. Everybody is with everyone. We all laugh together. We all cry together. We all... No individuality at all. Right. So they're both extremes. Mm. Because one identifies completely with the uh, outer, larger cultural soul form, as opposed to the family form. Mm. And then, as an individual, once you become aware of that, you have to decide where your boundary lines are. Mm. And frankly, that's kind of... I mean, I was confused as a little child when I saw this. I couldn't, and when I... It was explained to me... <laughs> Again. <laughs> that um, this is how Nanny and, and her family does things. And this is how we do things. This is, mm. this is the Asian way. Mm. And I looked at it and went... Okay, and then I looked at them and asked, well, what do I do at school? <laughs> so, well, you, you, you're circumspect. You have to be circumspect. Hmm. Like, okay. Uh, so, I had to learn how to switch from one mode to another, when it, depending upon who I was speaking with, because the communication modes were very different. 
communicating uh, to Nanny about how you're feeling and how it all happened. It was all experiential. She was there with you. Yeah. But trying to explain like a, a scientific technic- technical viewpoint uh-uh. right over her head. Right. Whereas when I spoke to my parents and talked about a more scientific technical viewpoint, we could communicate. Mm. But if I started speaking of emotion... That got shut down immediately because we don't do that. Right. And so in one sense, <clears throat> you could see that that one way of doing things was much more about the... Um, if, you, if we look at it from the point of view of uh, Tole, you have the egoic body and you have the pain body. You have the, the, the eye-centered, um, emotionless kind of of uh, um, thinking, the thought body, if you will. That's the, that's, that's the extreme form of ego mentality. Mental, 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 mental. No passion, no re- no, nothing except the, you know, the facts and, 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 and the dryness of it all. And then you have this, you know, the full pain body emotion completely lost in just the emotion reaction. And so both of these things are extremes of these of these fragments which people carry around with they either live as they live as a blend most people or they live entirely as one or entirely as the other which is the extremes but that's where people do get to and when you get off into the into the weeds of mental you you're 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 so locked down and uptight and and I'm unable to express any emotion but you're living in in that egoic body and then if you are going completely in the, into the emotion but both neither one of them um acknowledges the being at all they're they're always they're always in these in these niches well the it gets rolled up into what do you mean being that's who you are <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true okay i mean seriously it's it you you have to be um very independent in your thought and your emotions to be able to balance this mm. you, not to get enmeshed one way or the other you understand that this is all part of you these mm. are all aspects of, of who you are and what you've experienced but you realize that that's not me that's not who I am mm. and that's where it all began I think that, I, and you mean the greater I too not not the I, yes. I, yeah. Because you had enough experience to realize that um, there's manipulators on both sides. Mm. If you love me, you'll do this. What? So it gets into well, who do you love more? I was like, but that's not right. That's not what love is. What? What do you mean? This is just what you guys do, and this is what they do. It's just what they do. On just what you do. Why does it have to be that someone loves you more if you do it this way? Mm. So you begin to understand that love is not contained in these outward actions. Well, the word you used just a moment ago was enmeshed. And and that's a good one because these are both... um, nets or or in some ways traps or ways of of uh of enmeshing a, a a person the 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 mental form and we're going a little bit of far afield but we'll come back the the mental form does allow for a certain degree of passion but it has to be expressed in like say I'm going to be the best accountant ever I'm going to spend all my life um you know focusing on 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 these 17 numbers where you know it's so it's the the passion is been channeled into nothing but achievement accomplishment uh goal setting um do filling out all the boxes checking all the things it's all ta, 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 ta. that's the passion that's where you're allowed to to be passionate and um yet any emotion or any true let's say true feeling is is quashed if if you're saying well you know i 
um, uh, you want me to come and, and, you know, sit down on the floor and color with you, but I'm busy. I've got, you know, accounting things to do. I've got to, and you have to understand that those, those are very important things, and the important things take place of, of things like, you know, uh, whatever, family. So, so that's that passion. It's all like, you know, the I focused on, on, on the getting things done and, and, and setting goals and, and being the best uptight person you can be. And then on the other side, you know, the, this is the passion of the love, the gusto, the sex, the rage. It's all, um, passion poured into nothing but, um, completely unbound rivers of, of emotion, you know, whether you're, you're you know, uh, killing people with love, you know, <laughs> killing yeah. them with kindness. Uh, um, killing uh, people with food. Or, or raging, you know, raging out of control whenever anything, something flies off and you just, and you just feel completely un- unconstrained to just rage and, and break things and, and tear up and act out. You know, it, it, it can be violence, it can be, it can be just... Um, living your life so destructively that you end up, uh, you know, in a gutter somewhere, uh, completely wiped out by alcohol or drugs. These are these are passions too. It's it's this whether you're going to take your passion and um, buy into that if you if you want to live in the emotional way, it's all this. Or if you want to live, you know, in the achievement, accomplishment, da 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 da, you know, every every down to the last I and the dotted T and everything in order and order, 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 order. And they're both conceits in one way, but that's where passion gets um, all confused because... Well, that is the definition that people give to passion. Exactly. And it, you sit there and you go, but it's, that's not what passion is at its core. It encompasses all that. Yes. But to embrace, to be even begin to open that door to understand the fullness of passion. Because people are um, swept up in mm. their concept of what passion is. Yeah. It's, it's um, so I think we, you know, to get back down to, to brass tacks, you know, all these things, these the way you're you're brought up, um, you know whether it's it's sort of the mental aspect or the emotional aspect or some blend in the middle, they're all harnessing something. They're all harnessing a basic energy, a life force, a a key, a chi. You know when when we're talking about passion, in the basic rawest form, it's energy, and um, the the energy of you, of your being, is channeled up. Sometimes that energy is expressed in emotion, and sometimes that energy is expressed in in mental, um, you know, demonstrations or, or mental faculties. But but that that the power from it, see, it doesn't come from the outside, right? You don't you don't get your your passion from some you know fruit that you eat or some some um, you know, baking in the sun or something. It comes from within. It comes from the being. It comes from a your own life force uh, that is your individual spark. And if you look for the, the root of passion, you're going back, I think, into spirit, you know, into the into the flame from which you come. This this is this is our incarnate uh being. This is our incarnate self, but our being coming through that is where the passion really uh, resides, and I, I would I would postulate that it's coming up, you know, sort of like, um, you know, through the chakras, from the base or from the crown, and and invigorating all the chakras. Right. Well, it's a spark of life, which mm. is which is your spirit. When you're you're down here in a body incarnate, that's the burning. Mm. Life is the burning, and the idea is to to reside at the burning point. That's your soul. Mm. How you burn is that expression of the soul, and you are supposed to be burning 
all the time. That's the point. Life is passion. It is that combination of the spark of life with your pathway, the burning pathway. Mm. And once you encompass that, encompass this, to begin to see that all life, when you're you're engaged in living, being conscious, encompasses and expresses the passion. And it doesn't have to be uh, out loud, as most people think. You know, mm. it's like this is uh, passionately angry means that you're, you know, you're you're taking a fit in some way. You can be passionately angry, but so controlled that you'll send shivers down other people's spines mm. because they realize that the amount of passion that's focused is enough to act like a laser Mm. and cut through and part out the false from the true. Well, there's a, there's a a good, a good use of passion. Let's, you know, let's take a passionate uh, break and come back on the other side. We're going to talk more about passion, but uh, let's go back to the studio and just kind of cool out for a little bit here. Stones and murder. Real murderers need a heart of stone. Meet Maggie and Mike Hearthstone, parents of twin boys, entrepreneurs, and now empty nesters. Mike is retired, not by choice, from his position as chief of police in the picturesque resort town of Hamilton. And now his wife Maggie and her shop, The Cozy Crystal, are their only source of income. When a mysterious killing interrupts Hamilton's famous Springfield Park rock show, the townsfolk, the cozy crystal, and their lives are rocked to the core. Can Mike and Maggie figure out who is behind the murderous deeds before the town comes crashing down around them? A touch of romance, a little mayhem, and a whole lot of suspense, along with plenty of comedy and thrills galore. Get your crystal magnifying glass out. It's time for some Moonstones and Murder. Available on Amazon, Apple, Kobo, and other fine e-tailers in ebook and paperback. Out soon on Audible. Get your copy today. The wait is over. First Blood, book two of the Blood series is out. Your favorite bad boy thief, Dev, is back. And the beautiful and deadly Trey is right there with him. She is sharp, sexy, and full of surprises. The adventures continue as a new power arises to threaten the world. The heart of creation is under attack and time is definitely not on their side as they battle against their enemies' undead hordes. Can they unlock the hidden power that can defeat him or will his forces draw first blood? Get all three installments in the series. Book Zero. It's in the blood. Book one, Destroyer's Blood, and the new release, book two, First Blood, today. Available in ebook and paperback format on Amazon, Kobo, Apple, and most other fine e-tailers. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, the fat man gets out of bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. 
Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel, It's in the Blood, available for a limited time. There is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, there is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Hi, this is Hannah Ruth from the band Wild Hum. Check out our new Americana Soul CD, Wild Hum, at our website, W-I-L-D-H-U-M music.com. And you are listening to the Artist First Radio Network. Thank you. You are listening to the soul of the everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Thank you very much, Z-Man. And that was a, a, a passionate reintroduction. <laughs> I, I feel warm all over. And uh, tonight we are talking about passion. And um, I think we, we, we went out at, at an interesting point, and, and it really is coming, uh, you know, coming into uh, the definition of passion. And, and, and I think what we had begun to say was that the spark of of our incarnation you know our connection back to source is the channel of passion now it, it, source is not all passion but source is the foundation of where our passion comes through and and you can you know that's true because because when you're first incarnate you know uh, either in the womb or when you take your first breath when you're born your 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 passion, your first open mouth scream, <laughs> the breath that you take there, the breath of life, is 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 the is a passionate incarnation um, expression. I am, I, you know, in essence, I'm here. I'm 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 alive. I'm I'm hungry. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But that, that shows it, right, Mom? Yeah. When uh, taking the breath and activating everything uh, to the outside world, because when you're in utero, everything is very different. You're not breathing. You're actually breathing amniotic fluid. Mm. Um, everything feels warm. You're surrounded by it. You've gone through hours of being compressed, so mm. pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, and when you finally come out, everything is bright. You get to use your eyeballs for the first time. You hear things differently uh, because you you do hear when you're in the womb, but you hear it like you're underwater. Um, and then touch comes in and it's more real. Mm. Because everything was uh, 
you were surrounded completely by the warm amniotic fluid. So taking your first breath is important because you have to clear out all the muck, all the all the fluid, and then you have your lungs activate so you can breathe. And breathing for the first time has got to be a shock. Mm. You know, suddenly you're breathing air. <laughs> yes. And and that, that inrush of, of of life coming in is met by the passion which is your incarnation, the the being in flesh. You know. I'm here. I'm here. I'm screaming. Is that me? Mm. What is this place? Mm hmm. You know, just and uh our kids they, they would do the first cry and then they'd stop and then they'd open their eyes. And we'll try to look around to see what was going on because he could hear everything. Yeah. And just knew that this is okay now. For now, it's going to be something completely different. <laughs> now, for something completely different. Yes. Um, you know that. Uh, it, certainly, you could find. I think, if you said to somebody, a baby's first cry is a cry of passion. It would be you, you could find many people who would agree with that. It, it is an expression of a basic. Um, it, it's an expression of a basic being state. I am alive. This is this is the basic thing of passion. Passion is key. It is life. It is breath. It is energy. And then all the other things we, we pile on top of it, love and gusto and sex and intensity and all those other things we pile on top of it, all the words we pile on top of passion, are, are aspects of this thing. They're, they're, they're each one of them facets of a human being, but lived at, at, at in fullness. You know, passion is things in fullness. You know, when you see a, a, a bunch of roses in full bloom, there's a passion to them. They're, they're, they're plants, but they are in full, exuberant, passionate bloom. You know, when you first see the rose coming up, it's just a green, flower, you know, a green plant, and it has leaves, and it has a stalk and thorns, and yes, all this, all this. But then at its, at its height, when you reach... Your, your pinnacle, you express, even as a, a plant, a passionate flower. <laughs> well, the bloom is the fullness. The it's, fullness. Yeah. It's the expression. It's meant to open up in this moment. Mm. Just as the baby, when it, the first cry comes out, says, Here! Yeah. I'm here! Here! Now! Mm. Absolutely. You know, there's a now aspect of passion, too. It is only in the now that you mm. can be passionate. Mm. You can't be passionate about what you thought last week or, or you know, what the next plan may be. That's planning. Passionate is living. Real passion is living. So, so there's something there, because what Tolly would say is, again, you know, one of the things that people are looking for is to be in the now. And... And his way of being in the now is to be in the moment, presence, presence. But it's a very calm now. It's a good now, but it's a calm now. But but you can see where people get addicted to passion because passion is in the now. You're living in the moment. You may be screaming in rage or whatever it is, but it is a moment of now. And it has that attraction because you feel alive. You feel totally and completely alive. The thing is, with passion, you can't just stay there. You can't stay at 11. Uh, in being state, you can be totally and completely alive and be what looks like completely at rest because you, that's a realization state. It's true being state. But, but you can get into a being now state in the, in the height of passion. There, there, there's a spike there. But it's but it stops time, it stops the realization of present and past and uh, rather of future and past and all that stuff. It makes you now. Passion does make you now. You can only be passionate 
now. Yeah. But that that's it. It's not a projection. It's not a remembering. Right. It's only now. Right. And yes, people get addicted to what they say is um they they need a hit because they want to feel uh that rush. But I think they're confusing the body rush to the rush that is life. You can be completely in the now mm. and completely passionate about this moment and look exceedingly calm. Exactly. But you are so aware that if anybody looked into your eyes, they'd freak. Mm. Because they realize that you are so completely there, and they're not sure what to expect. Right, and and that nowness evokes nowness. If you truly do connect with someone who's in the now, uh, I think it brings it up in you. You know, um, the meditative state, the guided meditative state. You need a, a teacher who's who's not only in the now but also is grounded and able to bring the grounded now state into the people who are um, who are who are being guided in the meditation if you will and that's a form of passion too to be in a fully present state a fully present meditative state or a fully just fully present state is 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 passion at the, at its height but as you say it doesn't it, by all these definitions it doesn't look like passion it does it's not you know, it's not guzz, it's not, it's not, you're not throwing things, you're not, you know, it's none of that. The outward expression yes. is what people use as a guide or a, a, a measure for how they feel passion should be or how it's expressed. Mm. And it's, that's just the outward measure. Mm. When the connection is made heart to heart, the soul is present in the eyes. Passion that is, is life itself. Mm. And the expansion of that moment, and the, how do I say, the feel of this or the experience of this is not a mental thing. And it's not purely your emotions, but it is, a heart awareness mm. of how precious and how vital all that is around you is participating in, it's participating in life. And the things around you are only reflecting aspects of life. So it's one way to term it, finding God in every single thing around you. Mm. And I think you could even say there's an unconditional love aspect to passion. Yes. Um, because the being, because the being is, in essence, I would say the being is passion in one regard. And 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 I'm not using it in the term that people normally associate with passion. The the being is the essence of spirit it is the unconditional now it is it is and in that way now is the most passionate state you can be in passion again it can only be expressed in the now yeah you and can't it, do it any other way right it has no um, let, let me let's let's say it in a different way we we talk oftentimes about um the relationship heart to heart here amongst uh, one one to another let's say between two but that relationship when it's brought up to the level of passion in in a completeness in a nowness transcends time it transcends death and those two things mean nothing to up uh, to passion why because passion is again it's spirit and spirit doesn't know anything about time doesn't know anything about death doesn't doesn't un, has no it has no bearing on where your loved one is uh, physically 
or when the relationship happened time-wise. Because in, in the true now state, that relationship is as close to you as it ever was. It is, it is the now which is eternal and therefore doesn't matter. <laughs> people also say, people say eternal and think it means all time. I think Tolley said this also at one point. And eternal means nothing, it has nothing to do with time. Eternal means no time. You know? A state of no time. A state of no time. Mm-hmm. Say people, people say well, you're going to have life and have it eternally. Well, yes, but, but you're, you're going to have life and have it now, which is no time, just now. And, 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 and people don't understand that the connection between infinity and zero. If you're a mathematician, you understand the connection between infinity and zero. Zero is now, and so is infinity, and they're equivalent in that regard. Right, right. I always look at the symbol of inf- infinity, which is the figure eight on its side. Mm. I always look at that as uh, the zero reflecting zero. Yeah. Right through that through the nexus point, which is the infinity is, van- vanishing point, which is the touch point, and the touch point, right. So you know, God is seeing himself in that point. You know, uh, Penrose, um, brilliant uh, cosmologist and, phys- and mathematician and, and phys- you know, it just his concept of the universe is that there is no time and that, that the whole thing is in essence happening in no time. That the concept of time is, is something that we've that we have made up from our point of view and that it, from the from the outside looking in which is people say what do you mean the outside of the universe looking in but from the outside looking in it is that it is both a fullness of the two lobes of the figure eight if you will lying on its side and the infinity point which is where we say it started the big bang so to mm-hmm. speak but none of it matters it, it is it is both completely exploded and completely compressed at the same time right. because there is no time. Right. Right. And Penrose, says, he, says, he says things like that and he just walks away and people go, ah, because <laughs> he's just brilliant. brilliant. He's a genius. Oh, yeah. Um, but actually, the if you look at the infinity symbol, mm. um, the symbol of the Tao can be drawn with that. Yeah, that's true. And this, the symbol of the Tao is supposed to show the interplay, the relationship be- between the two circles. Mm. And how the if you're talking about reason is the circumference of passion. The measurement, if you took the circumference of the Tao, mm. and then you measured out one of the uh, leaves or the, what would you call it, the fish? The drops, <laughs> the fish, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah moving. And you measure that all out. One of those, one side, the, the circumference of the one side is equal to the entire circumference. Uh, and it happens both ways. So, it's it's another way of trying to say that we are all in this oneness. Just we are working on relationship, mm-hmm. going back and forth and round and round. Okay. And when you do create a Tao symbol, you have the dot in the middle of each of the drops and it's the opposite one, so you're supposed to be conscious mm-hmm. of the other mm. as you go through your movements. Right, and of course people see the Tao statically, and really it's a dynamic, three-dimensional thing which is represented on paper. Right. And so, uh, you know, th- there's, there's passion in the Tao. Uh, it is an expression of, of, people talk about it as being life, 
or uh, you know the 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 flow of opposites, but yet the the the, the great cycle, uh, the great the centers, but the centers are always moving. Uh, it, it, these are all perfectly good concepts for the way passion enters existence. And and, and that's the other thing I would say, Ma, is, is that when Tolle was saying, you know, that where are you? You are an invisible, undefinable, there's no one thing that you can put a finger on in a being, in a human being, and say, there it is, there's the spirit, there's the soul, whatever it is. No, you're completely invisible, but your passion is is you it is it is your own individual spark energy and as it Im, is embodied like the Tao is embodied in in one regard uh you see the the movement the uh the incredible balance but yet the incredible um lack of of it is never static it's always it's always evolving it's always moving it's always um you know it's 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 motion is is balanced and yet opposites and yet you know has a tension and it has it, it, it's just it's just this that's what makes that symbol so incredibly powerful yes if you if you allow it to become three dimensional mm. but i'd like to go back to the point where back to the uh, infinity symbol in the very center of it, which is mm. the un- undefined point, yes. the infinite point. That is also defined by the cross. Yes, yes. That is origin. <laughs> this is source point. Yeah. And we happen to be in these dimensions, and the passion that's expressed by the cross, where Jesus dying for someone, Again, we've said this before, no greater passion Mm. than to give your life up for someone else. Because you know in that passion of life that it's eternal. You Mm. had no choice. I am life. I am love. And you go do what's necessary right in that moment. Mm. That eternal moment. Mm. Which becomes recorded the byplay of what you have chosen in that eternal moment trying to save someone else's life and you had no thought of holding back it's just go i must do this that byplay is recorded for all eternity yes the phrase we use is the eternity bank you're putting that experience in so to understand that it's every single moment that passion can be expressed it's a matter of choosing Mm. do you choose this do you choose to love do you choose to forgive do you choose to be that eternal spark in that moment regardless of the fact that there's nothing but darkness around you. Mm. And of course, if you're the only spark in that room of darkness, everything is going to be turning towards you. Well, I, I like what you just said, too. I mean, the, the idea that in the moment of now, with passion, you write upon eternity. Yes. And and you, you're you creating, you know, passion is also the link back to no time. We have to, we, we have to say this again. In no time, passion operates. And in, in no time, you write upon eternity. So, so when, when you can feel this, when you are faced with an existential crisis, when it's you, when your life is being given for another, when someone else's life is on the line, and you act in in now time, you, you, everything else falls away, and it becomes just the passion and the now, and you can feel eternity recording that. You record it, but eternity records it, and then the the relationship, that bond, is like a wormhole. It connects what we call two different times because passion is now. 
and now is everywhere and all times. Once you write upon the now with your free will, this, maybe that's where you said reason, but really it's free will is the circumference of passion. That's how you decide what to do with your passion in the now. Because both cho- operate in the now. Your choice. Your choice. Your choice in that moment defines your passion, your quality, and your life. So we have reached the end of our hour. No! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Margaret. And I'm Michael. And thank you for listening. 